Hey everyone, welcome back to our series on choosing components. In this video, we're going to go over the most important things you need to know when picking a processor for your gaming PC build. We're going to talk about performance, Intel versus AMD, and compatibility issues you need to be aware of. We've also set a $1,000 budget for a build we're going to do, and in each video in this series, we will walk you through our thought process on how we choose each component with the budget we've set. Then at the end of the series, with the final part list, we'll go ahead and actually build the system. First, we're going to start off by choosing a processor for the build. There are two factors that are going to play the biggest role in determining what CPU you can and should choose for your build. They are A, how you will use your system, and B, how much money you have to spend. Obviously, the more money you have to spend, the better the CPU you can get. But depending on how you plan to use your system and depending on what your budget is, you may not need to spend a ton of money on your processor. For instance, if your main purpose is gaming, you don't necessarily need the best CPU money can buy. Most games today rely far more heavily on GPU performance, and so for gaming-specific use cases, you should allocate more of your budget towards your graphics card. On the other hand, if you're looking to edit videos or do graphics design work, or you're working with a lot of spreadsheets along with playing games, then you may want to put more towards your CPU. As a general rule of thumb for gaming-oriented builds, we recommend that you allocate around 15 to 20 percent of your total budget towards your processor. That's a rough guideline though, and obviously you can alter that depending on your needs. But with our $1,000 budget, we're going to look to spend between $150 to $200 on our CPU. Before you can choose a CPU though, you have to be able to differentiate between the many options that are out there. The processor you choose is going to have a ripple effect on your build and it will dictate many of the other components you can use. It's going to determine whether or not you can overclock, the kind of cooling solution you'll need, and what motherboard you can get, which will then determine more component compatibility, including things like what DDR generation of memory you can use, and what PCIe generation you can use, among many other things. Before you can choose a processor, you need to be able to differentiate between CPU options that are available. So let's first talk about the different levels of performance that Intel and AMD offer. AMD offers Ryzen 9, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 3 CPUs, of which the Ryzen 9 processors deliver the most performance and also cost the most. The Ryzen 3 CPUs deliver the least performance and cost the least, and the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 CPUs sit in between in both performance and cost. Intel offers a similar range of options with their Core i9, Core i7, Core i5, and Core i3 CPUs, where the i9 processors deliver the most performance and also cost the most, the i3 CPUs deliver the least performance and cost the least, and the i7 and i5 CPUs sit in between in both performance and cost. It's also important to note that the higher the processor level, the more power it will require to run, which in turn means the better cooling solution and the better motherboard that it will need. So if you're considering getting an AMD Ryzen 9 or Intel Core i9 CPU, you're going to need a better cooling solution and motherboard than if you were to choose a Ryzen 3 or Core i3 processor. Then within each of these CPU levels, AMD or Intel may offer more than one CPU option with a higher series or model number typically means better performance. For instance, AMD's newest generation of CPUs offer more than one Ryzen 7 option. There's the Ryzen 7 7800X and the Ryzen 7 7700X, where the 7800X will offer more performance than the 7700X. The same is true for Intel. Intel's 13th generation lineup offers a handful of i5 options, for example, including the Intel Core i5 13600K, the 13500, and the 13400, where the 13600K outperforms the 13500, which outperforms the 13400. There are also letter designations that give you more information on what the CPU has to offer. For Intel, the K designation means that the CPU can be overclocked and usually that it uses more power. And the F designation means that the CPU does not have integrated graphics. Or in other words, you have to use a dedicated graphics card with it. If it has the KF designation, it means both that it can be overclocked and it does not have integrated graphics. For an Intel CPU like the i5-13400 that has no K or F designation, it means the CPU cannot be overclocked and typically that it uses less power. It also means that it does come with integrated graphics. 
For AMD, the X designation means that the CPU comes with a higher clock rate. The G designation means the CPU comes with advanced integrated graphics. AMD dubs these processors APUs, and they can be decent options for builders who are working with a very tight budget and who cannot afford to fit both a CPU and dedicated graphics card into their build. If you will be putting a dedicated graphics card into your system though, you can ignore AMD's APUs as they typically offer less overall CPU performance than their non-G counterparts. The F designation from AMD means that the CPU does not have integrated graphics. This one is new and at the time of recording this video, you can't even get an F designated processor from AMD outside of China, but you'll likely start seeing more of these AMD processors in the future, so it's important to note. Then there is the new 3D designation, which indicates that the chip comes with AMD's new 3D V-Cache technology. This new feature from AMD provides these processors with more cache, which in turn helps them deliver more performance in certain games. For an AMD CPU like the Ryzen 5 7600 that has no X or F designation, it means the CPU does not have a boosted clock rate, but it does have integrated graphics. Along with the different levels of performance across the different models that Intel and AMD offer, both manufacturers also release new generations of CPUs once every one to two years. Newer generation CPUs typically offer more performance than older generation CPUs. Sometimes lower level CPUs from a newer generation can outperform higher level CPUs from an older generation. As an example, Intel's i5-13600K will offer better overall performance than the older i7-12700K. CPU generations are important to be aware of because they will help you narrow down your choice. If you have the budget for it and you are building a brand new PC, it's always a good idea to opt for the newest generation processors. However, older generation CPUs can still be excellent options, especially if you are budget restricted and looking to allocate as much money to your GPU as possible. And in fact, even with the $1,000 budget we're going to use for our build, we will likely be considering an older generation processor, despite the fact that we probably do have enough to get a newer generation option. Newer CPU generations can also introduce new CPU sockets. The CPU socket is the socket where the CPU is installed into on the motherboard. Every CPU has a specific socket that it is compatible with, and it will not work in any other socket. Sometimes multiple CPU generations can use the same socket. For instance, the Ryzen 7 5700X is a Ryzen 5000 series processor that works on the AM4 socket. However, the Ryzen 1000 series, Ryzen 2000 series, and the Ryzen 3000 series processors all work on the AM4 socket as well. We will discuss CPU socket compatibility further in depth in our video on choosing a motherboard, but just know that the CPU you choose will determine the motherboard you can choose as dictated by the CPU socket your CPU is designed to work with. Motherboard chipsets are also important to consider as some chipsets are better suited for certain processors than others. But again, we will discuss that in our video on choosing the right motherboard. One important decision you'll have to make when it comes to choosing your CPU is whether you want to go with an Intel or AMD processor. Both CPU manufacturers offer solid options at different price points. In the past, Intel offered CPUs that provided better single core performance, and AMD offered CPUs that provided better multi-core performance. This translated into Intel CPUs generally being better for pure gaming performance, and AMD CPUs being better for things like video editing or graphics design work. But with the introduction of new generations of CPUs, the performance gap in both single and multi-core performance has closed. AMD CPUs now offer single core performance on par with or exceeding Intel CPUs, and Intel CPUs have caught up to AMD CPUs in terms of multi-core performance. In terms of in-game performance, both manufacturers offer options that will provide similar performance at a given price point. For instance, if you have $300 to spend, your two newest generation options will be Intel's Core i5-14600K and AMD's Ryzen 7 7700X. And in most gaming benchmarks, these two CPUs perform fairly similar to each other. And to mention it again, because most modern games rely far more heavily on your GPU, the role that CPUs play in in-game performance is minimized. Therefore, when deciding between AMD and Intel, the best option would be to choose whichever processor of a certain tier is priced better. 
And that doesn't just mean the price of the CPU itself, but the CPU as a platform, which means the total combined price of the CPU, a compatible motherboard, and an appropriate cooling solution. As an example, if the i5-14600K comes in at $310, but you'll need to spend $200 for a motherboard, and because you want to keep temperatures as low as possible, you'll spend $120 on an AIO cooler, in that scenario, you would be spending more than if you were to get the Ryzen 7 7700X for $320, a compatible motherboard for $200, and since the 7700X isn't as power hungry as the 14600K, you could spend less and get a high-end air cooler that will do the job for, say, $70. So in total, you'd spend less on the 7700X as a platform because it requires less cooling. Of course, these numbers are generalized just to give you an example. It could be that at the time you go to make your purchase, the i5-14600K is the cheaper platform to build with. But it's important that you don't just look at the price of the processor itself and instead consider the whole platform. Ultimately though, while there are many different angles in the battle between Intel and AMD for gaming CPU supremacy, the bottom line is that both processor manufacturers present CPUs that are more than powerful enough to handle any of today's games when paired with the right GPU. So again, our recommendation would be to go with whichever option is cheaper when you are ready to order your parts. If we were to make a recommendation, at the time of recording this video, AMD seems to have the better value options at the moment. The CPU market is constantly changing though, so do your due diligence when choosing a processor. Another thing you'll want to consider if you are looking for the right processor for your needs is whether or not you want to have the ability to overclock. Overclocking allows you to turn up the speed on your processor, which can help you gain more performance. For the majority of users, overclocking isn't going to be necessary. However, for some users, the more processing power you can get your hands on, the better. If you do want to overclock, just note that you'll need to spend more overall to get the most out of your overclocking endeavor. For instance, unlocked CPUs, that's CPUs that can be overclocked, are typically more expensive than locked CPUs, that's CPUs that cannot be overclocked. In general, unlocked CPUs also require more expensive motherboards and CPU coolers to accommodate them. So if you're looking to build a budget gaming PC, overclocking may not be the route for you to go as it's going to take away more of your budget from your GPU. But if you've got a larger budget and you want to have the ability to overclock your processor, just make sure that you choose a motherboard and CPU cooler that will accommodate your CPU. It should also be noted that while Intel's budget-oriented CPUs and motherboard chipsets typically don't support overclocking, AMD's budget CPUs and mid-range motherboard chipset options do allow for mild overclocking, and they also come with a decent stock cooler. So one selling point of AMD in the budget range is that you can overclock them a bit without having to spend a lot of extra money. That's definitely something you'll want to consider if you are building a gaming PC on a budget. While processors in a certain price range are generally going to perform similarly to each other, there will be small differences. And the only way you're going to be able to tell which is the absolute better option for your specific use case is to read or watch CPU benchmarks. For first time builders, we highly recommend checking Tom's Hardware's CPU hierarchy list that ranks all CPUs based on their performance across a number of games at different resolutions. This will give you a general idea of how each CPU stacks up and will make choosing the right CPU for your budget much easier. However, we should note that some games and some applications run better with either an AMD or Intel CPU. So if you have a specific game or set of games you want to play or applications you want to run, it would be a good idea to check CPU benchmarks for those particular games or applications. It may be that for the games you want to play, Intel CPUs perform better. And so in that case, you'd be better off opting for an Intel CPU. Or the opposite could be true, and AMD might be the better choice for your particular use case. But if you're looking to play a wide range of games, using Tom's Hardware CPU hierarchy list is an easy way to differentiate between the different options available in your price range. All right, now that you have a good idea of how to differentiate between the many different CPUs that are available, you can feel confident picking a processor for your build. So now we're going to take our $1,000 budget and look for a CPU. Just a quick note before we start looking for a processor, we have already purchased and received all of the parts for our build. In this section of the video, we're gonna walk you through our thought process 
on how we ended up choosing the CPU we did choose. But since prices change every day, the choices we made might not be the best option for you at the time this video actually gets released, let alone when you actually view it. So just keep that in mind when we discuss prices and our recommendations. They may not be the best choice for you when you go to buy components for your build. Now, just to outline our goals for this build, we will be using this PC entirely for gaming. We would really like to play games at 1440p resolution on a higher refresh rate monitor, so we would like to keep as much money available for our GPU as possible. With that in mind, which CPU should we get? Using our recommendation to allocate 15 to 20% of our budget on our CPU, that leaves us with between $150 to $200 to spend on our processor. If we search for processors on Amazon, we see that our options in this price range are an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X for about 150, an Intel Core i5 12400 for about 160, an AMD Ryzen 7 5700G for about $170, an AMD Ryzen 7 5700X for about $185, and an Intel Core i5 12600KF for about $200. But there's also the Ryzen 5 5600 non-X for about $140, and we'll need to consider that one as well. For starters, we know that the 5700G is one of AMD's APUs, which sacrifice CPU performance to provide decent integrated graphics. Since we'll easily be able to fit a dedicated graphics card into our budget, the 5700G isn't viable for our build, so we can eliminate it as an option. According to Tom's Hardware CPU hierarchy list, the i5-12600KF will offer the most performance out of these options. However, the performance difference is small and it is the most expensive option. Not only that, if you want to have the option to overclock it, you'll need a Z690 or Z790 chipset motherboard, which is going to tack on a bit extra to the price. It also doesn't come with a stock cooler. Now we will end up picking a budget-friendly aftermarket CPU cooler for our build, so either way we are going to spend money on a cooler. But if you wanted to save as much money as possible to allocate to your GPU, being forced to add a CPU cooler to your budget could be a negative for you. Either way, I think it's safe to eliminate the 12600KF as an option. The 12400 is another excellent CPU option in this price range. However, it is a lock processor and we like to at least have the option to be able to overclock, so we'll eliminate that one too. That leaves us with either the Ryzen 5 5600, the Ryzen 5 5600X, or the Ryzen 7 5700X. Tom's Hardware's hierarchy list shows these three CPUs performing very close to each other for gaming performance. If we had plans to use our system for more CPU intensive tasks, we'd likely choose the 5700X for the extra cores and multi-core performance. However, since we'll be using our build solely for gaming, we think either the 5600 or the 5600X would be the better options. So which one of these CPUs should we choose, the 5600 or the 5600X? The 5600 and the 5600X are essentially the same chip, but the 5600X comes with a higher clock rate. This higher clock rate results in a very small performance gain for gaming, so deciding between these two chips will come down to price. Sometimes the 5600 and 5600X are within $5 to $10 in price of each other. If you're considering these two processors and the price is only $5 to $10 different, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get the 5600X over the 5600. However, the price difference for these processors can go as wide as $20 to $30. And if you're looking at these two options and the 5600 is $20 to $30 cheaper than the 5600X, we'd recommend you go for the 5600. You could always use the extra money on a better cooling solution, and then you could overclock the 5600 to make up for the small performance difference between it and the 5600X. You could also use the extra money on other component upgrades as well. For us though, when we went to purchase our parts, the price difference between the two options was right about 10 bucks, and so we opted for the slightly faster 5600X. And that is the CPU we will be using in our $1,000 gaming PC build. All right, we've gone over everything we think you need to know in order to choose a CPU as a beginner. We've also walked you through our thought process in choosing a processor for a build we will be putting together. Hopefully this video has helped you out. If we've left anything out, or if you're still not clear on how to choose a processor, leave a comment below that provides us with your budget and your intended use case, and we'll try and help you out. In the next video guide, we'll talk about how to choose a compatible CPU cooler for your build. We'll see you there.